Well, hey, listen, let's jump right in to the word this morning because I get the honor and privilege of sharing this morning. So I'm excited about this. And if you have your Bible, you can open it to the Gospel of John. I'm going to actually do a, a passage of scripture that's probably familiar to most of the world. Uh, John chapter 3, and we're going to start at verse 16. I don't, I don't even know, like, last time I shared and finished, the Holy Spirit said, hey, I want you to speak on John 3, 16. I was like, okay. What has that got to do with, like, everything that we're, you know, we're on the series and how's this going to work? And he's like, just read and let's talk about it. And so we're going to go on a journey this morning. Amen? Amen. All right. We have the NIV version, I believe, <laughs> that you can read this morning. That was kind of weird looking. Ah, there we go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God of God's one and only Son. Verse 19, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved the darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Verse 20, everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear of their deeds, that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So, Papa, I thank you for this morning, and I ask that your spirit would just come and release what you have for this place. Papa, thank you for your love and your goodness in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen, amen and amen. So, uh, here we go. John three sixteen. It's interesting that this whole t context of John chapter 3, if you go earlier in the chapter, it actually is, it starts out with the story of Jesus talking to Nicodemus. And Nicodemus comes to him at night trying to find out, you know, we believe who you are, blah, blah, blah. And it goes into this whole thing. I preached about that like a couple months ago, so I'm not going to get into that. But this is all in the same text and conversation. And the reality is Jesus is going through this process trying to get Nicodemus to understand something about, about the love of God and how the love of God actually is the source of light. Okay? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this out of another translation because I, I love the way that it says this. Okay? But you've seen it in NIV, right? Okay. The entire cosmos is the object of God's affection, and he is not about to abandon his creation. The gift of his son is for mankind to realize their origin in him who mirrors their authentic birth. Begotten not of flesh, but of the Father, in, his, in this persuasion, the life of the ages echoes within the individual and announces that the days of regret and sense of lostness are over. God has no intention to condemn anyone. He sent his son not to be the judge, but the savior of the world. Faith and not flesh defines you. In this persuasion of your authentic sonship, there is no separation or rejection. For someone to prefer to not embrace this is to remain under their own judgment, sustained by their futile efforts to define themselves through personal performance. In their stubborn unbelief, they reject what is revealed and redeemed in the name of the Son, begotten only by the Father and not in the flesh. Now check this out. Verse 19, it says this. And this is the crisis. The light is here right now, yet people are so addicted to their own darkness that they prefer a life of labors, annoyances, and hardships. Verse 20 says, when someone is engaged in something worthless, they often fear exposure and feel threatened by the light. 21 says, he who discovers the poetry of truth 
faces the light unashamedly. His lifestyle boldly displays the workmanship of union with God. His works speak for themselves, made in heaven, wrought in God. Now, uh, wow. There's so much depth in that that it, it, it really, if we allow Holy Spirit to just kind of start unlocking this a little bit, the, the reality is this. The love of God, when it brings us to the reality of truth, it unlocks who we are. That is the light that we need. That's the light that the world needs. When he talks about how people stay in their place of darkness because of fear, they're hiding because they're afraid that, that the light is going to expose their deeds of darkness. And they love that stuff. Well, they think they love that stuff because they don't know who they really are. And when you and I have an encounter with somebody and they see the light of God, they see the love of God in our life, it literally will begin to draw them. I remember one time when, when I was living in Maui, uh, me and my buddy uh, were walking down the streets of this cool little town, and, and we, we saw this store, and, and the store said uh, crystals and um, uh, just had all kinds of stuff listed, and my buddy goes, hey, let's, let's just go in there and check that out and see what, what it is. And, and I remember walking in the store, and as soon as we entered the door, there was a lady behind the counter facing the wall opposite of the door, and she's standing there like this. And we walked in, she went, <laughs> and she says, your aura. Wow, I don't, I don't think I've seen such, such a bright, powerful aura. And I'm standing there going, <laughs> what is she talking about? She's talking about the light of God's love that was so permeating me that I wasn't even consciously aware of it at that exact moment of what I was carrying. And if you and I as believers begin to realize what we are carrying and the power that is there, that is the hope of the nations. Now, let's see. How many of you have ever made the statement that you're afraid if God knew what you were thinking? Has anybody ever said that? Raise your hand. I cannot see you. If you, well, I got some news for you. He knows what you're thinking. <laughs> so get over it, right? He, he does. He really does. He already knows what you're thinking, okay? But here's the cool thing. He still loves you. But he wants you out of your loss of identity. The reason people fear coming to God is that he's been misre misrepresented. Right? This is not old. In fact, when Jesus came, he said, I'm here to establish something. You guys' view of Father God is jacked up. You don't know him. This is the Shannon version of the scripture in the story. Uh, yeah, jacked up. Uh, it's jacked up, messed up. You don't know who he is, and you're horribly misrepresenting him. So I'm here to tell you the truth, and not just tell you the truth, but show you the truth by demonstrating the power of God's love and how much he loves people. And you read all through the Gospels, and you see where, where Jesus literally encountered people in their brokenness, in their sin, in whatever they were engaged in. And what did he do? He loved them. And he loved them so powerfully that the light that was inside of him then became contagious and went in them. And then they became awakened to who they truly were and began following him. Now, imagine if us, as the body of Christ, would realize that. Because I'm going to tell you something. It happened back then, but it still happens to this day. The church and religion has horribly misrepresented God. And, and he's going... What are you doing? 
And instead of being the light and instead of being so full of love and so full of light that we're out there in the world, we've kind of hung out in the church. Instead of being the light. We've been called to be the light because without a shining, the world remains in darkness. Our goal is to allow heaven to manifest in our lives. I love what Pastor Matthew said this morning. We can't be full light reflectors that we're supposed to be while we're hiding in the shadows. Fear causes us to hide in the shadows. I got news for you. Perfect love casts out all fear. Fear has to do with punishment. And Jesus said it very clearly here. That, but the whole reason that Jesus came was not to judge and punish the world, but to release the love of God and to be the light that would awaken the nations to who they truly are. If we are the light of the world as Christ is, then we must not hide our light in reality, we must not hide from the source of light. So, so how does this all come together? It, it comes together like this. See, when you and I begin to embrace our true identity as what? Sons and daughters of God, right? And we begin to allow that love, of, that love and the light of God to then shine through us. And that love isn't a love that goes and judges people, but actually draws them to the Father. All of the sudden, transformation begins to happen in the person that you're encountering. Why is this important? Because without it, we don't accomplish what we're here to do. If, if you and I embrace the love of God and show people what the love of God is really all about and, and who he really is, because he's not there to judge them and destroy them and wipe them out. I mean, you know, you've got hurricanes going on, and, of course, you've got the crazy religious people that are running around saying, see, this is God's judgment on blah, 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 blah. And it's like, ah, oh, misrepresentation. What are you doing? This is not who he is. You show me through scripture one time where Jesus blessed a storm or said to the storm, hey, why don't you go teach them a lesson and destroy them? That, that wasn't the nature of him. What did Jesus do anytime he encountered a storm? Silenced it. As he is, so are we in this world. We had a really cool thing happen when, when we were living in, uh, we, we had a season of, of hurricanes that were just coming constantly uh, to attack the islands. And our intercessors um, began to just take the authority because they began to actually believe this stuff, <laughs> believe that, that, that we actually have authority. And, and they began to take authority and, and begin to pray. So when these, these hurricanes would be coming towards the islands, they would pray. They would take authority. They would pray. And they would release what the Lord would say. Like, we just, we just come into agreement right now, and we just we command this storm to go to the left in Jesus' name. Like, we take authority. Let, let it go to the left. And then the next time one would come, they'd say, all right, well, let's just pray. And we just pray the, the storm would go to the right. We go to the right. Go to the right. And so it's funny. Our head intercessor at the end of hurricane season, because you could go on this map, the Noah map thing, and it would actually show the track of the storms. And he said, Shan, I got to show you this. This is really cool because they kept like a journal of the prayer of the intercessors. <laughs> this is a plug for the intercessors. This is really cool. <laughs> he started to go down the list and he showed me that, that every time the intercessors would begin were praying and if they were commanding the storm to go to the left, it would it literally, you'd, so you'd watch the track of the storm and it'd go, whoo, and go to the left. When they'd command to go to the right, shoo, and go to the right. 
there was one time we were, we were praying, and the storm was coming. It was a massive one, and they, they, they were saying it's going to hit the island. It's going to be, you know, really bad, as bad as the one that wiped out Kauai and all this stuff. And, and we just, like, had this, this thing come over us. We just began praying, and, Father, we just said, God, would you just send your angels down and just, like, destroy this storm? Like, just hack it. Just destroy it. Hack it to pieces. Like, get rid of the thing. And that night on the news, they said the, the weirdest thing has happened. There's these sheer winds from above that are just kind of hacking at the storm and just kind of shredding it. And we're like, what? And there was one time when the intercessors were praying, and, and we, they weren't together when they were praying. They were praying separately for some reason. And half of them were praying that the storm would go left, and half of them were praying that the storm would go right. And you watch on the storm track thing. <laughs> You watch on the storm track thing, and as the storm's coming, it's going. <laughs> and then it hits the big island straight on. But it didn't do the amount of damage that they thought. And, and it was just interesting that, that they were being the light, that they were being the love of God over the nations. Now, Does that always happen? Because obviously, were people praying and interceding? Yes, people were praying and interceding over Florida. Does that always happen? Does that always manifest? No. Why? I, I don't know. That's above my pay grade. But I know this. I have an example that Jesus set that impacts my life, that gives me an example of what a son in proper and right relationship with the Father looks like and what authority that we have, that we can then do and manifest. And the love of God, which brings the light of the world into the world, is what the world needs most right now. And you and I get to participate in this. So how do we do this thing? Through our encounters and our love and relationship with God, we come into the world and as we come into the world, we allow that light, that love of God to fully illuminate us. And then when we go out into a darkened world where people are afraid, remember the passage said that, that they seem to love their own. Th I don't think they love their sin. I don't think that's the issue. I think they don't know who they are. And I think they're afraid of being judged and hated for who they are. When in reality, that's not what God's all about at all. He's all about bringing the presence of, his, of their true identity. Because when you get awakened to who you really are, what happens? You don't want to do this stuff anymore. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Am I just talking to myself this morning? I don't know. Maybe I'm just speaking to myself. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you had that encounter, when God began to deal with you, like, like love you, when I say deal with you, I'm not like a deal with you. <laughs> no. When he began to deal with you, like through his love and say, hey, listen, this isn't who you are. You don't have to be like that anymore. Like, this is destroying me. This is hurting me. This is exactly, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Just let it go. Like, my love is sufficient. It can take care of any of that stuff and, and, and pull it out. That's the light of the love of God shining on sin, shining on darkness. It's not this, this lightning bolt thing. <laughs> All right? It's not that. It's the light, the love of God that literally is penetrating darkness. It's the kindness and the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. And what is repentance? It means to be restored to who you really are. It's returning to the top. It's, it's getting that proper perspective, the heaven-to-earth perspective. It's understanding who you are and allowing God's light and love to shine through you. You and I get to be the light to the world. And when you and I love people right where they're at, 
and aren't there to judge them and condemn them for where they're at, but actually there to say, listen, this, I get it. Like, I, I understand you're, you're, I, there's an identity crisis that's kept you from who you really are, but let me show you who you really are, and you don't need this anymore. We have all kinds of epidemics going on through addiction and issues and lack of identity and, and gender misrepresentation, all of this stuff. It all is rooted in the same thing. It's rooted in the lack of identity of who they are as a son or a daughter of the Most High God. And God's love is the only thing that can bring the truth and unlock them from the bondage that they're in. And that love comes best through you and me. Look at your neighbor and say, you and me. It's amazing. We get, we get an opportunity to be that light. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Are you going to be the love of God in the world around you? That's the question. Are you going to be the light in the world around you? That's the question. Let's stand together. All it takes, all it takes is an encounter. That's it. All it takes is an encounter. And when people that are bound in, in, in situations of darkness can recognize the light that you carry better than you can? <laughs> My prayer today is that God, the Father, will awaken in you the, the awareness of what you carry. And here's a little thing that I learned that we can do. When we're out and about, we can literally increase the light around us and allow his presence to just increase by thinking about him, by thinking about his goodness, by thinking about just who he is. He's drawn to that. So everybody close your eyes. Some of you this morning may be like, hey, Pastor Shan, like I, I'm hearing all this and I'm, I'm not even sure that I've encountered this. And so I really probably should get on the right track. Good news. The fact that you recognize that proves that you're from above and you just need to be awakened to who you are. So if that's you, just I want to see your hand real quick so I can be praying for you. Okay. Good, good, good. All right. So, Papa, over those that just raised their hand, I pray that you would just wrap your loving arms around them, pull them in close to you, that they would experience you. Father, the rest of the people in this room, I just declare over them an increase of the awareness of who they are and what they carry of you and that your love would fully invade every cell of their body, and that your perfect love would cast out and drive out all fear and cause them to shine so brightly with your love and your goodness that others are drawn to that light so that then they can be awakened to who they are, that we can be the light of the world, we can be the light to the world, because you are our source of light in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Now, go out, be the light, 
and change the world. Amen.